Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jesse from Houseboat Kings. Um, I'm going to show you a much requested um, document that uh, I use to plan my houseboat trips when I go to Lake Powell. Um, so uh, I'm going to kind of get right into it. I don't really have much of an intro other than um, please visit houseboatkings.com. We've got a bunch of funny t-shirts and, and great uh, tank tops and swimsuits and um, tumblers and stuff like that for um, houseboaters and boaters and things like that. And Anyway, uh, I love going to Lake Powell. It's my favorite place on the planet. And um, it's also uh, a pretty crazy and wild place. And so there's a lot of questions that people have about planning one. And by the way, if you're what this this planning document I'm going to show you will ha will work for any houseboat trip that you're planning at any lake. Although I am going to be focusing specifically on Lake Powell. Um, however, um, what I'm about to show you is going to be useful for any houseboat trip that you're going to be taking. Um, so, uh, with that said, I'm going to start off by just showing you some pictures from one of the trips that we took to show you some of the visual and everything of, of what we did. Um, because, uh, I can show you a little bit about where we camped and everything and, and kind of show you, uh, you know, some things that, uh, you might want to see. So, uh, I'll show you the campsite we found first here. So this is, uh, the, this is the, uh, like the 46 foot expedition. So this is one of like the cheaper houseboats. It's kind of like the first, it's really like the cheapest like houseboat that can hold like, like nine to 12 people. We had 18 people on this trip and I'll, sh and I'll explain to you how that all worked. Um, but we found this campsite and it was a beautiful campsite. We found it, it was an amazing beach and we actually, I'll show you where we found it. It was actually right up here, right on the other side of Gunsight. This is Gunsight Canyon right here. And it was, um, it's hard to tell because the lake water changes so much, but it's about right here. Um, maybe like in here w uh, w with the water a little bit lower, we found a beach route right here. This is a really awesome place here too. Some people were here lighting off fireworks and stuff. This is an awesome place to go camping. Um, I've also found some great spots um, all the way on this wall here all the way up into this canyon this is an amazing little place to find if you can find a campsite here um i think we were camped up right, actually right here um but it's all really busy up here because it's really good camping and it's close to the um to the marina i also uh went on another trip in 2016 where we camped basically um right here about yeah right here on this peninsula here and i can show you uh, a really cool picture of me um, actually golfing on there uh, here um, okay so actually this is I was wrong when I first started when I first said but uh, this is this is the, uh, so that's Dominguez uh, this is the peninsula that I was just <laughs> talking about right here so this is like this is the peninsula so that I'm like up here golfing and, and looking out this way um, and so that's our houseboat um, anyway, so we set up golf and stuff uh, and play in the desert. It's called Frontier Golf. Super fun. We did a little, um, uh, you know, sunset cruise. Um, we had, you know, floaties and all that stuff, everything. So um, won't get too much more into it. But that that's kind of the visual of, of what of the trip I'm about to talk to you about. You can do these cool things where you're, you know, um, doing tracers and stuff at, at, at night with the flashlights with long exposure. Um, cameras. We did some cliff jumping, of course, and uh, a bit of group photo. So um, I will uh, I go into the planning document that I used to plan this, um, and um, I'm going to be probably doing another video too about um, how to pick a campsite on Lake Powell. So um, I'm going to hide this um, just for the time being. Um, so, well, I can show you this document. All right, so um, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, things that go, goes into th this document and a lot of things that you have to do to set yourself up for success. The first thing is, um, you know, a lot of people when I'm planning houseboat trips, they'll say, yeah, I'm interested, and then they'll back out. Um, so I always plan for, like, I invite way more pe people than I plan than I actually tend intend to um, – actually have on the trip now the, the obviously you got to be careful because uh group dynamics dynamics i think are really important uh, you really don't want to bring 
someone who's going to mess up the group dynamics or just kind of be unhelpful or be kind of a honestly the asshole you don't want any of those people you really got to think about who you're inviting and if they get along and everything right um and so uh and you also don't want to over invite and then you have to uninvite people and stuff so it's a definitely a delicate balance but what i definitely know for sure is that um i've 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 invited way more people than i've actually committed and there's also a way i'll show you later on in the document how to get people to commit and then make sure they don't back out uh, which is something that I think has been helpful. But So I have this roster here on tab one. You can say first, last name, whether they're male or female, which I think is important because you don't want too many guys or too many girls. You want a nice even mix or if you've got a bunch of couples or whatever. Just nice to know. Um, email, phone number, emergency contact info, name. And then uh, if there's a big carpool effort, then it's nice to know who they're driving with. Um, so we kind of try to keep that um, – all on there and so uh we have a confirmed and a maybe and you know we move these around as people confirm and everything so that's a pretty basic roster one um <clears throat> the master expense tracker is i'm going to be spending a lot of time on this tab here so um this is actually and by the way you can download this uh document in the youtube uh comments or in the in the description here um and i'm going to leave all this information in here because this is actually my actual expenses from this is uh, 2014 versus 2016. So um, just so you can get an idea of what you might expect to pay. Uh, we rented a different book, uh, boat. So like I said, in, in the 2016, did a 46-foot expedition. Actually, I rented the same boat for 2014, 2016, but I rented a bigger boat when I went last year in 2019. Um, so, But that's not in here. Um, but anyway, it's about the same boat, and it, the price difference is basically due to when you rent it, if you rent it earlier in the season, they'll give you a discount. If you rent it in the off-peak seasons, you get different prices. So that's another factor that makes it hard to plan is, is you you know, if you want to get the best price, you need to book in like February and then you just have to front all that money and then hopefully people pay you back. And so that's the other kind of consideration when you're doing all this stuff is that you really want to make sure that if you're going to do it, you got to do it early and then you have to make sure that people who are going to pay – who are going to come are going to, are going to actually commit and they're going to come. So it does take a lot of effort to make sure people come. But this is kind of the master spreadsheet that I used uh, for tracking, you know, my confirmation number, my reservation number. Um, I actually printed this out and I brought this with me. And I'll, I have another video that I'm going to be making that shows my uh, – I brought a um, – uh, a notebook that has all the important documents and maps and things that I'll show you how wh what I brought for that, which is useful. Um, but this is where you start, um, you know, collecting all the in important information that you need to make sure to pick up your reservation. Um, and, you know, username login for lakepal.com, which is useful, you know, things like that. It's just nice to have it all in one spot. Um, I also have the total amount for the speedboat, which I rented from an offsite company. I didn't rent from the marina. Find, you can find much better pricing, but you just have to tow it to the lake yourself. Um, that's specific to Lake Powell. Um, so I uh, got a pretty good deal on a speedboat for, um, for that amount of time. And um, I have a little subtotal here of the total rental costs. Um, so uh, the, the next the next tabs down here are my fuel estimates, and I'm going to show you how I estimated the fuel here in a second. Um, it's kawaii, <laughs> it's quite complicated, and I got it really wrong the first time, and I over budgeted the next time. And honestly, it's like impossible to truly budget for gas. So the best thing to do is just to over budget like crazy. Um, and by the way. Uh, that's a important thing to remember, and I'll show you a little bit more on that later. Is that I'm always I, I've come to the conclusion that it's better to over budget, always over budget, um, and assume and and charge people based on uh, the fewest number of people possible going, and that way because you can always re, you can always give people money back, but if you run out of money in the middle of the trip, it's a lot harder, right? So, and and just asking people for money is can be a pain in the butt. So. Always, always over budget. Um, this is my fuel and food estimate. Um, food estimate was a best guess. Um, and I'll have a little per person estimator that I'll show you a little bit more about how I got to that number. Um, ice estimate was way under budget. I would probably, I would budget. Ice is super expensive and very useful. So I would probably have doubled or tripled that. Um, you know, 300 bucks on ice sounds crazy, but it's not when you're down there. Um <clears throat> 
you know, wakeboard rentals. Uh, we had to rent a campsite before. You know, if you are renting from the marina at Lake Powell, I recommend highly that you camp the night before or um, a lot of what the marina does now is that you can actually spend the night on the boat in the marina and then you're on the marina. You can load all your stuff on the boat, which takes the most time. And then you're ready to go in the morning. And if you you have to request that specifically from the marina, but if you do that, it's it's way way better. Um, I, I bought a marine radio. Um, I rented a big big cooler from the University of Utah, and uh, had a paddleboard rental and everything like that. And then I have another subtotal here that's pretty much all of the main big big expenses that you um, that you want to account for. And then. You know, things like liquor and beer and stuff like that, I just advise everybody to bring their own. It's always bring, bring your own beer. Bring your own anything, bring your own whatever is not in this list, you know. Um, food, I think, is a communal thing. But anything other than that, if they want to bring their own snacks, uh, that's an iffy one because if people could bring too many snacks, you have no place to put them. But whatever, you know, mostly it's fine. But liquor and beer and stuff like that, just have everyone bring their own stuff and no glass um, and, and everything like that. Um a lot to lot to talk about, but I won't get into too much because there's so much detail. Um, so I have this sort of total here that I that I came to that um, is my total rental cost that I need to personally collect from people in order to ha- make this trip happen. Um, and um, the uh, other thing that that is important to remember is that um, you always have a deposit a d- damage deposit that you put into the boat. And that should come from the group fund as well. But if they give it back to you at the end of the trip, then you can give that back to you, the people who, you know, are the, on the trip with you. And so that's an important thing to remember too: is that, um, you know, you can always, like I said, you can always refund people, but always account for the the deposit refund because then again, if it doesn't come back, if you damage the boat, then the group should pay for that as well. And since you're responsible for that, you need to collect that money up front. Um, and so I did these little other calculations cause I was already planning on refunding and refunding them. Um, so if, you know, um, if you want to account for that as, on a per person level, then that's kind of what this, um, calculation is. And so I, it's, it's not, it's not so obvious what's going on here until I tell you about the per person estimator. So this is, um, a little tool that I developed to help me understand how much per person people are going to have to pay. Obviously, it's right there in the name, per person estimator. Um, but what I obviously the main the main thing to remember is that, and this is not this is just basic math. The more people that come, the less per person cost it is. So that's the benefit. If you're cheap college kids like we were, you want to keep it as low as per person as possible. The more people that come, obviously. <laughs> the more logistical nightmare and, and stuff like that it can be. Um, but you, you can do it on the cheap if you got a lot of people. And the, the next question I'll answer right away is you're thinking, well, the boat only holds 12, only sleeps 12 people. How are you going to have 20 people? And the reason the, the answer is that we slept, you sleep on the beach. That's what I recommend. I think 12 people on a houseboat is not even that much and not really enough. And so um, I'm always – we had 18 people in this trip, and so I just uh, – you know, we just said bring a tent and you're going to camp on the beach, and trust me. It's better anyway, honestly, because you get more privacy. Uh, people are in and out of the houseboat all, all night. You don't get any sleep on the houseboat unless you're sleeping on the top, which is nice, unless it rains. So anyway, it's just – long story short, bring a tent. If you Even if you have – even if you have just 12 people, I just recommend that anyway. But uh, so um, – what I did in this sheet is I I knew when I was making the sheet that I had I could count on about 20 people but I I was for sure about 18, right? And I ended up being right about that cuz two two backed out, but we had 18 people. But what I did was I I assumed that only 12 people were going to come. So when people are saying how much is going to cost per person, I was telling them 641, when in actuality I knew it was really only 428. Um, you know, and you could probably use 15 as well for that. Um, but the point is, if you even if you know for certain that 18 people are coming, don't ask for the bare minimum. Ask for the 13 or 14 per person price. Um, that way, you know you'll over budget, right? And so, um, I've also added in uh, a little calculation for um, 
you know, 600 divided by 14 here, which is uh, 440, $43. And the, the, the damage deposit was 600, 600 bucks. Probably should have put 615 72 but whatever. So I knew that these people were going to be paying me 550 but they were probably going to get $43 back. Um, and so the real cost was going to be about 507 So this is just mostly for your information, just so you can kind of get an idea of how much people are going to be really paying. Probably not not necessary to really get this detailed about it, but that's how I like to do it. Um, now, for a food budget, I kind of just did $50 a person, um, and that was that ended up being good. Um, you know, like I said, you can always over budget, and that's $50 a person for – this is a four-day – uh, three nights and four days. Um, so fifty dollars uh, for three for two meals because we only did lunch and dinner, or sorry, breakfast and dinner. And I'll explain to that later why you want to do that. Um, and so I said about fifty dollars per person should cover food, and I was about right. Um, and so then you this this thing will calculate you know fifty dollars fifty times the number of people, so fifteen so. That was the number of, of food of the, about the food budget that I used up here in this calculation. Um, and with food budget, you don't want to assume twelve people. You want to assume the maximum number of people because running out of food is the worst thing you can do. Um, well, one of the worst things. Um, so, you know, uh, just keep that in mind too. Is that I I just went with a thousand bucks because even if only eighteen people were coming, I knew we'd have enough food budget. Um, per day food budget, just in case you, uh, care to know about that information. Like I said, I kind of get very detailed about this stuff. Um, and then what I did too is that, uh, um, and I'll explain this later in the payment and reimbursements tab, um, about collecting payments, but, uh, you want to split it up into two different payments. You want to get one early as possible. Um, and I would, and I say set a hard date, you know? Um, even if, um, even if you don't have everybody committed to say, I need everyone to pay by June 1st and the trips in September, you know, and that's going to commit them to sit, to giving you the money and the money is non-refundable. If they back out, then they need to find somebody that could replace them or you keep the money and that's how it has to be. And so it's sometimes hard to have that conversation with your friends, but that's how it has to be. So, um, so that's number one, and then they can pay the rest of it, you know, the day you get there, or maybe a couple of days before, or something. So this splits it up into two payments, um, you know, per person, uh, or two per person, uh, two different payments, right? Um, so that's that per person estimator. Uh, it's a pretty cool little tool. All right, um, fuel costs. Now this is uh, this is going to take a minute to explain because. First of all, there's really no good way to to determine how much you're going to be spending on fuel because it's there's just too many variables, um, in my opinion, uh, to really do it. Maybe some salt to your houseboat captains have a better way, but um, you know you can't really say the houseboat goes 10 miles per hour and the campsite that we haven't picked out yet and don't know where it is is exactly 10 miles away. And so it's going to take us an hour to get there, and that means that because the houseboat burns 14 gallons an hour, then we'll only spend 28 gallons in gas because we only need to go there once, and we're not going to move the houseboat. And so there and back is 28 gallons. That would be really nice if it was that easy, but it's not that easy because, like I said, you have no idea where you're going to camp yet, so how can you say where you're going to go and how far it is, right? Um, And there's other factors too where, um, you know, you can't say how fast the houseboat goes because how how heavy is it? How many people are on there? Is it windy? Is the water rough? Um, you know, it, it it's impossible to really say. So you have to do it in like a range, like minimum five miles per hour, maximum twelve miles per hour. And I'm not even really sure if that's accurate, but the but you know you can ask the marina. Um, you know, if they know about how, how fast the houseboats can go and they'll probably tell you the similar answer. Well, they're not really sure, but they'll say between this and this and take their word for it. And then that's about, um, how long, you know, or how, how fast you can go. And, and there's, I've, I've got a tool that I'll show you, um, in a second that will, that will help you understand 
help you calculate exactly how far you expect to go and then you can use that to to calculate backwards from you know how far you away from the campsite or well, how far away the campsite is from the arena which you're you know you're going to go and find a campsite on Google Maps about and then decide this is about how far away I think I'm going to be going and it's 15 miles away and then um you know the houseboat goes 5 miles an hour so whatever the calculation is and then times the number of hours by 14 gallons per hour and that's how many gallons of gas you expect to use um another way you could do it is just say well we can go 120 miles on one tank because that's about and that's about what um the marina will tell you um you know and that that's also just an estimate too you know um and then just say uh we we're going to cover the entire we're going to assume that we're going to use all the gas and just charge everybody for the, an entire you know a gallon an entire tank of gas from the gas from the houseboat um and that's another way to do it and then of course like i keep saying you can just reimburse them whatever gas you don't use you just send it back to them that's another way to do it um we were trying to do this on the cheap so i wanted to keep it you know low low cost per person so i wanted to be more accurate so anyway um you can do these calculations um so i'll run this through one more time just to clarify so i found out from the marina that the ga- that the houseboat had a 140 gallon tank i knew that um it had one about one mile per gallon um and four gallons per hour <clears throat> so that's about obviously that's 14 miles an hour so i think it's probably a little bit too fast but anyway that's what i calculated um so I determined that the total tank distance was 120 miles and the total run time was 10 hours. Um, and that, and 10 hours on a houseboat is a long time at Lake Powell. I mean, you can usually where we go, where the campsite I showed you earlier was like two and a half or three hours away. So 10 hours is, is more than enough. <clears throat> Same thing with speedboat. Again, hard to tell. You can get a little bit more accurate with um, speed on a house, on a speedboat uh because um it's easier there's actually a speedometer first of all um because with the houseboat there's only the tachometer (laughs) or no the uh the revolutions per minute uh so you can only really tell how fast how many revs you're doing you don't really know how fast you're going in a lot of these houseboats maybe there's houseboats that have speedometers but the ones in the marina don't so it's easier to do it with a speedboat, basically. Um, and you can do the same calculations and just, um, you know, determine about how far away you're going to go um, and and determine how much you want to budget for gas that way. Or you could do the same thing with the speedboat and assume that you're going to um, spend at least one gallon with a speedboat, probably two, if you're going to, or one tank. If you're going to be doing a lot of speedboating, then two tanks is pretty likely. Um and you know a lot of these houseboats too like the one we rented in 2019 have like a reserve tank that you can pull from and put into your your water toys um that doesn't that doesn't pull from the houseboat gas but it's just for toys um and you know um use that as a as an estimate of how much um you think you'd be using for speedboat and you know other water toys like you know personal watercrafts and stuff um this is probably the hardest calculation of all. Um, you know, so <laughs> this is how I did it. Maybe there's other better ways, but I think it did work for us because we did over budget one year and then under budget the other. And so I got it right by the third year. And with gas prices, we're assuming at least five bucks a gallon at the marina. But with speedboat gas, you can fill it up. You know, if you're towing it, you can fill it up off site and you get the actual real prices of gas. Um, however, if you have to fill it up from the, you know, the reserve tank on the houseboat, obviously you're paying the marina gas prices. So, um, that's another factor that makes it kind of difficult to, um, to calculate, which brings me back to the point of it, it, just charge everybody is assuming you're going to use all the gas and then reimburse them. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, all right. So I did, um, <clears throat> uh, 
this is just I'll, I'll go over this first and then I'll show you how I got these uh, miles because there's a tool that I, that I found that makes it easy um, but this is just basically my uh, 2016 um, houseboat and speedboat 2014 and 2016 houseboat and feed speedboat what I estimated versus what I actually spent so you can see I um, underestimated by 160 bucks on 2014 and I overestimated by 2265 because I learned from 2014 <laughs> don't underestimate so anyway this is just for your reference um, all right so <clears throat> I um, don't remember why I decided to calculate it in nautical miles I believe that the um, I believe that the the house but the marina um, the um, the ranges were in nautical miles. Uh, yeah, that's why. So the when they when they um, give you the houseboat details in their little uh, PDF that they send you, which gives you almost no information, um, <clears throat> they say the, they give you a general range of the houseboat, but it's in nautical miles. Uh, what the hell does that mean? So um, there's a way to calculate it, and that's another way to to determine, you know, how fuel costs and stuff. Um, but, uh, how do you know where you're going to be going? Because there's not like a Google maps. Well, I found this tool for you. It's called freemaptools.com slash measure distance. And here it is. And what it allows you to do is set these little waypoints from wherever you want to go to where, wherever you're coming from to wherever you want to go. And it'll give you the, um, actual distance between the points in aggregate. So, um, I can go into full screen and show you, um, you know, <clears throat> here's the Wawi Marina. We went through the cut through, um, you know, kind of just made a pretty rough little, little estimation. And then, um, <clears throat> I, I had, I had already picked out a campsite and I knew it was going to be, you know, about right here. So I think I, I, that's what I used to. Um, to calculate it, but actually, I didn't even know this existed. I think I calculated it to something over here, probably, you know. And so, either way, uh, as you can see, it's not it's not an exact science, but this gets you pretty damn close. So this is sixteen point eight miles from Wawi Marina to um, this campsite, which we stayed in twenty nineteen. Um, another thing you could do, like I keep saying, is overestimating. I think is a good thing. So you could just, uh, you know, estimate all the way up to here, 23 miles, you know, and just say, well, I, I have this maximum range. You know, that's a good thing to do, by the way. If you're not sure where you're going to camp, which you won't be, especially if it's your first time, you can, you know, say, well, what if I just want to explore this whole canyon here one day? You know, see how far it is. It's 25 miles just to get from there to there. Uh, now, not a good idea to, to do that on the first day because you don't want to get stuck out on the water while it's sunset and you don't, haven't found a campsite yet. So, you know, there's not, no guarantee of a campsite up here. So if you don't have time to go all the way there and all the way back, then don't go up there. Um, now, like I said, I'll show you a, little bit, a different tool of how to, uh, <clears throat> I'll show you in another video how to pick a campsite on Lake Powell because that's a whole other video. But either way, this is a little tool estimator that you can use to find out how far it is that you might want to go. And like I said, this is already 20 miles. All right, so um, there's that tool. Going back to here. Um, this is done with this master expense tracker. Um, anyway, lots to go over, but hopefully that was, I explained it well enough. This is what uh, this is what I use to track the payments and reimbursements. So, um, like I said, I was calculating for only 12 people, so that was $641 per person. And so, um, I, I said, okay, I need 50% deposit, non-refundable, upfront if you want to come. And that, that weeded out so many people that were just on the fence. They didn't want to commit, so, and that's a good thing. So, I highly recommend doing a 50-50 deposit, non-refundable. Um, and then the final payment was just the day or a couple days before or whatever, before they came. Um, and, uh, this particular tracker gives you a name and email, um, 
total of 20 you can add more if you want but it does a pretty cool little thing where um, if you haven't received anything yet it helps you calculate how much you've received so um, I'll just show you real quick you can see zero here and I inputted I inputted this just by my you know hard hard input 321 from the other from the other sheet so when you start getting payments then um, as you know this is sort of meant to be um, filled in over time you can see that this gets added to this total here and you can you can have a running total of how many people have provided you with a payment and what your total collected is um, so that's pretty cool and it does thing with here so with the final payment it detects that there's a date in there and then it adds it up um, in the final here and the column all the way down so as you add in the dates this gets added up so um, and then I just like to you know who, how, how, how do they pay me do they pay me in cash do they pay me in PayPal um, where, where's the money that they gave me I like to track that um, and then down here we've got reimbursement so while you're on the lake I highly recommend you know if you go to the marina and someone you know buys some ice or some beer or whatever um, just have them keep the receipts and just let them know that you know because you've over budgeted a little bit you can probably take it from the um, from the group account um, you know and uh, and that's the other reason you want to over budget because there's just some things that some people are just going to pay for that really should be for the group and um, you just want to have money to pay them back so um, you know ice is a big one um, so I just like to keep keep track of that here and then we can you know you can send them the the, the refund the money from the group grocery list I actually don't have very much because it's different for everyone so uh, I, <laughs> meal and store <laughs> you know whatever maybe add another line here item oh whoops anyway Yeah, there we go. All right, all right, good enough. Item, which meal it's for, and what store you're gonna pick it up at. Pretty basic. Um, here's a pretty, here's a really pretty. I think it's a pretty good packing list. By no means comprehensive, because I mean the stuff that you can decide to bring to Lake Powell is basically endless. But I highly recommend a lot of these things. One thing I, I just want to couple point out a couple of things um, that probably most people don't think about, but are really really nice to have. Um, firewood is one for sure rakes let, let me say that again rakes you want to rake the beach of all that uh, um, cactus and um, prickly stuff that's it's a desert right it's not a nice groomed <laughs> Caribbean beach it's a freaking desert so you might find a nice beach and then realize oh there's all this crap on here and it's not nice to sit down on so it's really nice to have a rake um, uh, tiki torches, absolutely essential in my opinion. Um, shovels for digging anchor holes. They do provide one, but I think they only provide one or two. And by the way, you can request more than one, more than two anchors, which I do. I've never done that, and I found out recently you can. And I wish I would have because two two anchors is not enough. Um, so you just want to be able to bring, be able to dig a bunch of anchor holes all at once and redig anchor holes. And the shovels they give you are just kind of like foldable crappy ones. So anyway, just bring shovels and then hatchets and machetes are useful for hacking away like, you know, tumbleweeds or things like that. Um, you know, just, there's just plants and stuff that you might want to remove to, so you can set up your easy up or something. So you just want to like be able to, you know, do a little bit of landscaping basically. And the tarps are good for that too. So there's a lot of tumbleweeds. You can put all the tumbleweeds on the tarp and then you can actually set up, you know, do a bonfire or something later, which is really fun. Uh, basic stuff here, paper plates, uh, ACDC car converter. Um, one thing I don't have on here is a uh, power strip because everyone needs to charge their freaking phones. And so there's never enough power um supply so you want to make sure you bring a power strip so people can charge their phones gps i find very useful um yeah i'm going to put drone on here as a nice to have 
Oh, I already had it. Um, binoculars for sp scouting out campsites, um, camping chairs, camping tables, um, handheld radios, which are useful. They're, they don't provide those to you, so you need, you need radios really bad. Very important. Duct tape is all useful, as you know. Um, one thing I'll mention too, and this is the last thing, um, is um, download your uh, music beforehand so that you, because you won't probably be able to download it on the lake. So just download all your music or whatever, bring a CD. Cause, and also CDs are useful because a lot of boats just have still have CD players. So anyway, um, telescopes are really cool to bring. Um, <clears throat> anyway. I'll let you get into this, but that's a, uh, this will at least, you'll survive if you bring all this stuff. Um, I've got this little campsite finder tab, which I just have the pictures that I use to help find a campsite. Not like I said, I'm going to make another video, but this is a map of the different canyons and, and things like that. And the different landmarks that people use to reference the lake. Um, and then I was taking snapshots from Google maps and stuff and finding reference points and, you know, camp you know googling google images for lake powell and finding trying to find where the campsite is you know because you can this is gregory butte and so if i know that this is gregory butte and i can decide that it's taken from the north or the east side of gregory butte then i'm guessed that this campsite was about right here and i was right because i that i knew that this is gregory butte so i from this photo i guessed that they're camping here and and it was taken but that's one way to find a, a campsite. Like I said, I won't get it too far into it. And this is actually a um, somebody did took a, a 360 camera on the Lake Powell tour boat and made a Google Street View of the entire tour boat um, path. So you can actually see um, what it looks like to to from Wild Weep all the way through the cut through. It's really useful. Um, Okay, this is another intensive tab that is very useful. Uh, so in my, in my experience, people don't eat lunch, <clears throat> mostly because they're drinking beer all day. If you don't drink beer, then maybe this doesn't apply to you, or if you have your family and you have kids, then probably doesn't apply as well because kids are always hungry. But if you got a group of grown-ass adults that drink a lot of beer – I'm telling you right now, they won't eat lunch. <clears throat> it just won't happen. And um, mostly they'll be. And by the way, they might. They'll probably be out wakeboarding or you know doing all that stuff and you know bringing snacks and and things like that. So in my in my opinion, I don't ever plan for 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 lunch. Um, other reason I don't is because it disrupts the day. Everyone got to get everyone together and then cook lunch and clean it up and no one wants to do that so if you do need lunch then i would recommend planning to just um make it alongside breakfast so that you're making breakfast and lunch all at once and then you know if it's sandwiches or something then do that but don't plan to have a lunch during the day because i just i've never had success doing that so and and most of the time um you most people can get by on snacks and stuff throughout the day especially if you just plan a really big breakfast um then it usually works out that way and so when i do my food planning i only account for breakfast and dinner um <clears throat> and uh um the way i also do the food planning which has helped which has been really useful is um is it's you don't want and this is in the guide, by the way, that I'll link in this video, and it's on the website for Housebook Kings. Um, you want to have, um, you don't want someone in charge of the kitchen the whole time because that just sucks for that person. And everyone needs to contribute on a houseboat trip. There's no freeloaders. Everyone, it's not a complete vacation. Everybody, you know what I mean. So you have to um, split people up into teams. And so most of the time, it's like people coming like groups or whatever so you can just friends will just be in a in a food team and then you split up the meals um so that uh, team one does breakfast on the second day and team three does dinner on the th on the on the same day and then team one did uh dinner the night before and then breakfast the next morning and so now they don't have to do anything the rest of the time and now if if you have multiple if you have more days than this then they'll probably have to do more than one meal or two meals but the point is everybody every team only has to do one breakfast and one dinner the entire time 
and that makes it so much easier. Um, and uh, they clean up, they do all the prep, and then they don't have to do it ever again. And I, that's worked out really great. So this helps. This is a combined itinerary plus food plan. So, um, you know, you would put the team names in here for the different food groups or food teams, and they would just know that they are, you know, print this out and bring this with you. And then they just know that they're making breakfast on Thursday and they got to do it. Uh, or they got to make, don't get too drunk during the day. Cause you got dinner up here, bro. <laughs> We're all hungry. Um, now the other thing I got here is the itinerary, which is nice to have. I mean, this is the two main big things is what you're doing and what you're eating. That's most people, most, most people care about. So, you know, you've got, um, leaving your home, meeting at the campsite, um, picking up the boats, finding a campsite, setting up, wakeboarding, tubing, frontier golf. And then if you want to do a day activity, you know, go into Rainbow Bridge or something like that or do some other um, uh, adventure, uh, whatever. And then um, more activities on this day and then heading back to Marina early as possible. So, you know, everyone has to get up early. Um, got to clean the boat while it's underway, unpack it, all that stuff. So anyway, it's nice to have the itinerary and the food plan in one, in one, uh, sheet. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, some notes from the planning meetings that we were holding. Um, so these are just some, you know, basic talking points that you can borrow if you want. Things like be responsible, wear sunscreen, um, you know, be a responsible pooper, um, cooler management, you know, everyone's got to take the part and putting the ice in and taking out, you know, garbage and cleaning it up as, it, as needed, you know, um, going over what to bring. And I always like to bring, remind people that, you know, you got to stay positive. You can't control the weather, be prepared for the worst. Um, and, you know, let people know that this is dangerous. You know, people die, you know, <laughs> It's not all fun and games, and so you have to set the right expectations. And I also like to set the expectation that I expect you to help me as the captain. I need you to help me. You need, and if I ask you to go dig an anchor hole, you gotta go do it. Um, if if it's your time to do the food, then you have to do it, and I expect that from you, you know. And so I set that expectation early, and uh, it usually works out. And then go over budget and payments and stuff. So you can borrow that. And then uh, this is just an FAQ tab um, that you can use. People have, you know, the idea is to share this with everybody so that you can have it all in one spot. And everybody, and I, the other reason I like to do this, uh, I'll finish this real quick. But anyway, you put your FAQs in here for what common questions people ask so they can go back. You have to keep answering the same questions. But um, I do find it, one of the things that I will mention too for getting payments from people is that by keep, keeping it public, it really does uh, incentivize them to do it because no one wants to be the last person to pay. So whenever I'm sending out my emails to the group, I say these people have paid, these people haven't, and everyone knows who hasn't paid. And I find that to be very useful um, because I don't really have any tolerance for that. If people aren't going to pay, then I, I'm going to have to use some little group pressure to get them to pay. Anyway, uh, that is actually the la the end of the, um, the planning document. So I will link this in to, um, a spread into the bottom of this, uh, YouTube video description. And I also send a link to my other planning document, which is my how to plan a houseboat trip 101, um, which goes into more detail. And then I'm going to be doing another video, uh, on how to find a campsite at Lake Powell. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, hopefully this was clear and, uh, and you could understand it. And, uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, you can just leave a comment, um, or email support at houseboatkings.com and I'll do my best to answer. Or you can, uh, ask us on our Facebook page, Houseboat Kings. All right. Thanks so much.